how to use software instruments specifically with GarageBand. And this video, we're gonna go over how to use software instruments with GarageBand. And this is actually just a snippet of content that I've taken from a more extensive GarageBand tutorial course I have. I'll leave that link in the description as well for you if you want to go check out the more extensive full course. It's about two hours long. It's for free and it's on YouTube, um, but it's just a huge course. So I just took this snippet out if you're just looking to um, figure out how to use software instruments with GarageBand. So um, let's get into it right now. If you want, go check out the, the longer course, link in the description. Let's dive deeper now into actually recording audio um, software instruments and drummer tracks. And then we'll dig into each of these sections that I mentioned here to go over more of the terms and so you can get comfortable with it. Let's remove these tracks here, classic electric piano, classic electric um, piano, and the Wurlitzer. So we're going to um, open up a new software instrument track and create. And I wanna hear the sound from my speakers. And if you have to change that, by the way, um, it's good to know where the settings are. You can go to the top where you have GarageBand and here you have this, all the settings in GarageBand uh, under preferences audio. So you have general, audio, metronome, loops, my info, and advance. You'll really only have to use audio. You can keep everything default as what it gives you. And where you are going to want to change things is under audio, output, and input. We'll come back to talk about input device when we're recording audio. For example, when we actually want to use a microphone or we want to plug in a guitar to our computer, we're going to have to come here and change the input device so we can tell GarageBand, hey, I want you to record my microphone. And we'll come back here and we'll choose our microphone from this drop-down window. So by default, GarageBand gives you this classic electric piano as the default software instrument. So we can go, and if we don't want that, if we want a bass, we just click over here on bass, fingerstyle bass, we can see it's changed and you can also see the controls have changed at the bottom because the controls down here have to do with the track, right? Let's, for simplicity purposes, just choose, you know, if you're going through this tutorial with me, choose whatever instrument you like. Um, I'm going to cho choose a piano, a Steinway Grand Piano. And I have different controls here and I have a track ready to go to start recording music. How do I actually record, right? That is a great question. So you can do it through two ways and we'll do both those ways in this video right now. The first way is the easiest way and the way I recommend if you um, can go out and buy a MIDI controller. A MIDI controller is just kind of, it looks like a keyboard, but it's not actually a keyboard. For example, I have my MIDI controller right here and I'll put up an image on the screen just so you can see what it looks like. The other way to record using these sounds if you don't have a MIDI controller. And that's to use musical typing inside GarageBand. We can go to the top here and press window and then uh, show musical typing. And this just gives you an interface of what your actual keyboard looks like on your computer. And you can press these notes. Like if I press this J on my actual computer keyboard, it will be the piano note um, which is, here is a B. So I'm gonna X this and we'll go back to my piano and Steinway piano. I personally like to start, if I'm going to compose a song, uh, my bias is towards using piano because I play piano, but maybe you use guitar or you wanna start with a beat, that's completely fine. We're going to use software instruments, audio instruments and drummer tracks in this video to go through. Um, what those actually are in GarageBand. So that is a software instrument track, and we only have these um, software instrument tracks available to us in this library here. So we have bass, drum kits, electronic drum kits, sorry, guitar, mallet, all the way down to arpeggiators. And we can use any of these instruments, and it will load in vintage clav, 70s clav, and we can go through these, and we can have multiple tracks. Again, if we want to add another software instrument track, for example, another green one. We can have maybe a 70s clav, and then we have a bluebird drum kit. And then let's say we wanna add 
another software instrument track. Let's add a bass. We'll add a Liverpool bass. And then we'll add another one. And we, we can keep going. We can add many, many um, tracks here to make up a song. Let's add a synthesizer. Let's add a bell synth and some air bells. And so we've already have four tracks in our song composition right now. And we can actually, you know, bring up our musical typing and record different elements within this uh, left to right window here, then record some drums, record some bass, record some air bells, and you know, we're kind of off to the races making a song. So what this one, two, three, four is, is giving us an idea of what the tempo is before we start recording. For example, if I press record, it's gonna do the click four times before it actually starts showing up in red here. And now it starts recording. And then you can hear the click continue to go on. So we are recording right now. And um, it's not recording my voice at all because the microphone's not connected. As soon as I go over here and press on my piano, it's starting to record piano notes. So I just record these three lines here. And then, you know, I can just play any, like just whatever, right? So I'm putting all these notes in there. So you never obviously want to do this, but this is the, the idea here. We've just recorded all this information. It's a green MIDI track here. So I can always just be clicking on this and pressing backspace on my keyboard, and that will just get rid of that audio. And what I'm gonna do now is press record and play a C major chord, an A uh, G, an A minor, and then an F. So this is a simple chord progression that um, you can you can rip that off of me here. I've it's a it's a I've ripped it off from other people. It's a standard chord progression, and um, we'll use this as the kind of building blocks for our song. So I'm going to record, just kind of turn my body here and record that in. Okay, so this is what a what it looks like. We can see these lines here, right? And I'm gonna zoom in. I'm just how how I'm zooming in here is I'm pinching on my trackpad. But if we if you don't have a trackpad, you can go over to the the right here, and um, by clicking this slider left and right, we'll see uh, it will zoom in for us. So we can zoom in to get a better look at this, and we'll see here that. It's just lines, right? MIDI data is just lines. There's no like actual musical notes. MIDI, you can think of MIDI because it's digital, it's just lines. So if we want to see this even more zoom, here is where the piano roll editor comes in. So we're going to click the scissors and we'll drag this window up. So we see in detail here, this and this, these two things are the same. And so we have another slider on the top right here where we can zoom in and out. Okay, so let's look at this in closer detail. And what I've done, what this yellow bar is at the top, this is what, uh, this is the cycle bar, this icon here. And the cycle bar is helpful because you can quickly like click and drag. And then whenever you press space bar, it will start where um, you've cycled it. So I'm just gonna, I can just press space bar and we'll start at bar one. If I, if I just wanted to hear bar two and three, it will loop that over just that um, chord right there. So you get the idea, it's kind of a loop and you'll notice this becomes very helpful when you start working in GarageBand. So here is our MIDI information that we've recorded in and what we can do here is click and edit any of these notes. As you, you see when I click on them, it's actually playing the, the note for me. So if you can see here, I actually like 
didn't hold the note on the keyboard long enough. So it's super small, right? So I can just click the end here and drag it to make it, to fix it. Because the, the other alternative is just to re-record the whole thing. And sure, you go ahead and do that if you'd like. Or you can just click and drag and now you have the note in there. And you have the chord. So these are, these are chords. This is your C chord. This is your G chord. A minor. And then your F. So you can literally look at where I've put these on the keyboard here and you can just copy that if you don't know how to play the the music on your keyboard or controller or you can look up um, MIDI note information on Google and just look at like what do the MIDI notes um, what are, what's the MIDI information for a C major chord or a, a, any chord you'd like but this is C uh, G, A minor, F. So that's the information for you here. I never really go to the score because I don't, I don't work with, sheet, oops, I don't work with sheet music. But this is what the actual sheet music looks like. I'm usually in the piano roll editor because I like to work with MIDI information. Two things I want to mention in this piano roll editor for the super beginner is you can click and drag notes to make them longer and shorter. But you can also click and drag the notes to make them sound more in time. We can do this manually and we can also do this automatically. So to do it manually, you can see here, like I just zoomed into this C major chord. You'll notice.